find product links below and hundreds more videos on my channel. Hi everyone, welcome back. So uh, today I wanted to show you a comparison of the Sony A7 with the 5D Mark III and the NEX6. I figured that those would be really good comparisons for this camera. The 5D Mark III is more of an upgrade. There's a lot of things that it does better. It is about twice the price of this. And um, and there's a lot of things that it, uh, you know, that improves on this. But also, you know, this A7 does a lot of things better than the 5D Mark III. But still, I figured it was more of an upgrade, uh, especially because of the price. And then the NEX6, which is actually about half the price of this, rather than double. And so I figured it's much uh, more of a downgrade. They are very, very similar in features. And um, I mean, really, really similar in features. But this does have a lot of improvements over it, uh, even though the features are similar. So uh, because there's so much to go over, I'm going to split it up into four different videos. It's going to be this and the 5D Mark III for stills, this and the 5D Mark III for video. That's going to be two separate videos. And then again, two separate videos for this and the NEX6. One for video, one for stills. Because that I, you know, because there's so much to go over, I figured a lot of you guys are only shooting stills or only shooting video. It's going to save you a lot of uh, time and also make it easier for me to shoot it in uh, a few separate sections uh, and just concentrate on those specific things. And uh, okay, so let's get started and there will be updates below in the description because this is still a fairly new camera. We still may find, uh, you know, improvements to this or maybe we'll still find more issues. But uh, so far, it's been uh, a very decent camera, but with its you know, it has its issues. So let's get started. This is going to be the stills comparison of this and the 5D Mark III. Now, uh, first of all, I made a short list of things uh, as I've been using this short, uh, made a list of things that have been annoying me. And normally I wouldn't do this, but there's been so many things that have been annoying me about this camera that I figured it would be worth actually making a list. So I know to let you to, to tell you all those things. And, um, so it's just minor issues and bugs and annoyances about this camera and uh, a lot of them are really really things that can be fixed in firmware updates so really i hope that sony will listen to you know listen to us and do some fixes on this with a firmware update first of all um i'm going to go over the stills annoyances i will go over the video annoyances later and in the nex comparison i'm not going to go over the annoying things i'm just going to leave that to this video so um, the, first of all, when I'm shooting stills, I take a photo and then, uh, it, uh, goes into the play menu, uh, sorry, the play view. And uh, a lot of the time you would want, I would want to check, you know, um, the, you know, zoom in on the image and check what's going on there. And the thing is when I zoom into this image, first of all, there is a delay and it is quite annoying for that, uh, waiting for that delay. Secondly, it zooms in all the way in. You can zoom in further than this, but this I would consider zoomed in all the way. Let me actually show you this with something in the middle of the frame. Um, it zooms in right the way in into the image. That's just a yellow, the yellow thing that's uh, over there in the image. If I uh, if I zoom out, you can see how big of a difference that is. Uh, obviously, the color doesn't look right in the video that you're watching right now. By the way, this is being filmed on the NEX6 uh, because I only have three cameras anyways. So uh, so that's that's one annoyance for me. Uh, just this thing where it has to zoom in all the way. I couldn't find anything in the manual uh, about how to not have it do that. And uh, for me, it's really quite a big annoyance because this doesn't really tell me anything. And this means that I have to start either zooming out or going to the area where I want to see whether it was focused in. Um, but it's, I've never really needed or barely ever needed to zoom in this much into an image just to see if I'm in focus or to see something about the image I just shot. So quite a big annoyance for me as a stills shooter. By the way, if you haven't seen my work, uh, I do pretty good stills work and pretty good video work. Um, so check that out below. Uh, have a quick look so you get an idea of the kind of stuff that I shoot. Um, just, uh, you know, I'll have a link to my website below so you see the kind of uh, work that I do. And, um... Okay, next up, uh, this is something that I suppose would be both for stills and video um, shooters, but the startup time uh, can be a little slow, especially with non-OEM cameras. It's not a very fast uh, startup for the camera. Uh, that's sort of your standard startup time. It'll show an error, I'll speak about that in a second, but it's, it's a sort of slow-ish startup time, which is especially annoying because you have to turn the camera on and off a lot, and I'll explain that in a second. Now, um, 
Next up, there are warnings on the screen, but actually I'm going to leave that for the video shooting section of this because that only applies, or that mostly applies to video shooters. Um, as you saw, it gave this error that says running on, or not an error, a warning message saying running on NTSC. That's mainly for video shooters and that's NTSC is the region settings uh, of the video mode. And um, okay, there are some uh, warnings that would come up to, uh, other than that but again, mainly for video shooters. Now, uh, next up, let's, uh, hold on, I'm just going over the list. Uh, there is an issue where if you don't have this set to, um, to automatically play back your images, so right now I have it, let me actually show you that. I'm gonna go into the menu if I can find it. And uh, if I have this set to not automatically, sorry, I'm in the wrong area, to not automatically display the image that I just shot. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Haven't fully got used to this menu yet. And auto review, there we go. So if you have this set to off, which a lot of you might want to do because it's a little bit slow if you don't. If you're trying to shoot a lot of photos, especially in the viewfinder, uh, but uh, I mean, it's going to be very similar on the screen. If you're trying to shoot a lot of photos, it's pretty nice and easy to do like this. And uh, when, you, when you have this image review set to on, then there is a delay and between, you know, because it has to, it has to show you the image first because it's, you know, it's digital viewfinder and screen because it has to show you that image first, then that means that it's sort of slow to take lots of photos. You have to wait for that image to come up and then half press the shutter to make it go away again before you can take your next photo. So a lot of you might want to actually do this. You might want to turn that uh, auto review, meaning displaying the image automatically after you shoot it, to off because that just allows you to shoot much faster. And obviously you can set it to like a speed burst mode or something. Uh, but just for regular shooting, this allows you to shoot much more comfortably and then press play when you need to. However, a lot of the time after you shoot the image, you press, uh, you know, if you set it to this sort of setting like that, after you shoot the image and you press play, it's going to give you an error rather than just wait for a second and then show you the image that you want to see. It's giving you an error and then not doing it at all. And it's saying, I'm writing to the card please wait. And it's just, I think, I don't know, I don't know. I think it's um, really something huge that is a very big annoyance. Um, I don't know why they did that, but there's a lot of things like that in this camera that just don't make sense. And I think just haven't been tested thoroughly by Sony. Um, next up, let me, I'm just looking at my, uh, my list of things here. Uh, okay, so next up, a very similar issue, which is that you can't use the screen only for playback. This has been mentioned by others as well. And uh, a lot of you might, uh, I would love to have this feature, I know a lot of other people would like it as well, is to only have this uh, viewfinder on. So you're looking through the viewfinder, you take your photos, and then when you take a photo, it'll come up on the screen. But when you're not taking a photo, when you just bring the camera down to your side, the screen is off, the viewfinder could be off or on, because uh, it does obviously have a sensor here to know when you when your face is close to the um, screen. And uh, that would mean that you waste less battery and that when you're walking around, especially if you're walking, um, you know, maybe in somewhere dark or in the evening and you're taking photos, uh, which, you know, a lot of people do, then you don't have this screen constantly on because it is quite a bright screen and it's just like having this bright thing right next to your body that's just saying, hey, I'm taking photos, you know, um, look at me. So uh, it's just much, much less... Um, it just makes you sort of obvious. Uh, that guy's got a camera and he's taking pictures. You, people can really obviously see that the screen is on. And so you have to constantly turn the camera off because you want the screen to be off. And then if you don't do that, then you can only view things in the viewfinder. So you can tell the camera, I only want to see things in the viewfinder. So you go into the menu and you change it to that. But then they, but then you can't see anything on the screen other than, uh, other than this sort of view right here, where it uh, just tells you information about what you're shooting, uh, you know, your settings and stuff. And so, uh, but you can't, you you have to press. Um, 
the play button to to bring up photos on here in fact i'm not even sure if it will um if it will actually do that uh i can actually check that right now uh we'll go to find a monitor and we'll tell it that we want only the viewfinder and when we take a photo it won't come up on the screen it's showing me that right now in the viewfinder and uh, if i press play uh, again, n nothing's showing up on the screen, even if I press the play button. Um, and so the only thing we'd be able to do is, uh, I think there might be a way to bring up the display on the screen, as I mentioned a second ago, but actually right now it's not doing it, so maybe that's my mistake. Um, and then uh, if we wanted to bring that uh, screen, this uh, screen to be usable again, we'd have to, I'm going to have to look into the viewfinder right now, and then enable the screen again. So, did I do it? Maybe not. I should have done it. There we go. So, uh, very big annoyance and uh, yeah, not ideal. Another thing with regards to the viewfinder is that when you want to shoot close to your body, a lot of people like to hold a camera like this. It's very sort of old style um, to, to hold the, you know, the camera at your stomach and look down at it, especially with this lovely flip down screen. And you'll notice that when your body's close to it, the screen will turn off and it'll go to the viewfinder. And there isn't a quick way to switch between the viewfinder and the screen or to, to, to quickly tell it, you know, only go to screen, or only go to viewfinder, that sort of thing. So you, you end up with having to hold it far from your body. Um, when, when you're in the dark, it's quite a big difference. I usually, something like this and any closer and my screen would turn off. So uh, especially for, this would also apply to video shooters. This is a, a big annoyance if you want to quickly move the camera down to get this sort of angle. Uh, it would apply to, to video, sh to still shooters as well. But um, you want to quickly take a shot at a low angle and your screen turns off and you have to then hold it uh, away from your body, which means that you're less stable and less comfortable. So uh, again, an annoyance. Now, another annoyance with this camera is that the menus will tell you uh, that you can't do something, but a lot of the time they won't tell you why. They will give you, uh, they'll say, um, sometimes they'll give you sort of an explanation of why you can't do that, but other times not very much uh, and sort of you have to a lot of the time guess wait what setting do i have here that's preventing me from changing this other setting i've seen this happen loads and loads of times as you can see a lot of these are grayed out so zoom setting it says it says zoom optical uh that says uh, optical zoom only and here it'll tell us that the quality uh is raw and jpeg but it doesn't specifically tell you that you can't shoot this because you are you because the raw is turned on it's letting you guess it says quality raw jpeg and then you have to go oh well raw uh okay raw is only raw so jpeg is the only one that would have digital zoom enabled that sort of thing and sometimes it won't tell you anything at all it just says no you can't do this right now um so invalid with this lens and then you have to guess why it's invalid so oh so yeah it's just just a, 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 a quite a big uh, annoyance. Again, something that really shouldn't be happening. It should just be that you can still enter this option to change settings, but it won't apply. So let's say if I want to tell it that I would like uh, optical and digital zoom, and then it should have a little, maybe a little thing at the bottom that says this, uh, you know, digital zoom won't work in RAWs. So um, yeah, that, you know, that's... Um, very big annoyance for me uh, with these menu options, but you do get to learn and you do get to, um, you know, you do get to figure out how to eventually properly work the camera. Um, and you do get to find out uh, as you shoot with it, how to, uh, you know, um, how to uh, get along with these issues. Now, let me see if I have anything else on here. Um, now, one last issue that I want to talk about that I found is that when you are in uh, auto ISO, it will sometimes allow you to go below auto and it'll have another option that'll say auto. And if you just very quickly scroll down to auto and you go below auto to the second one, 
that will enable an option that makes the camera shoot three photos at a time if it wants to. So, and it gives you no warning in uh, on the screen, and it doesn't tell you why it's shooting those three photos, but it will shoot those three photos. I'm actually going to show you that, and again, it's one of those things where you just have to try and figure out. Uh, so here right now, I know that it's because I have raw and JPEG that it's not doing it. If I'm only using JPEG, then uh, I can accidentally go to this uh, second auto ISO feature. So that's auto, that's regular auto, and this one if you accidentally go to it, it's sort of um, auto that allows the camera to automatically shoot three photos for you and combine them to try and get um, lower noise from those three. And so it'll only do that when it wants to, it won't always shoot those three images. If I'm shooting uh, into a very bright light, then it might not do it. Uh, actually this time it did even though there was a bright light. But it's an automatic setting that you can get to by accident and it doesn't give you any reason on the screen as to why it's shooting three photos. It just does the three photos and if you're just in the middle of a shoot and suddenly those three photos happen and you can't tell it to not do it and you don't know why, it's again just a really, really um, annoying thing that could come up. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, and that won't happen if you're in RAW because uh, obviously it can't combine three raw images. Well, it can't make them into a, a third or a fourth raw file. So it'll only, you'll only accidentally get to that if you're, in, um, if you're in JPEG mode. So, okay, those are my annoyances about shooting with this in stills. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff. I just got to 19 minutes uh, just with the annoying things about this camera. So I'm going to have to just cut this video off right here and I'm going to actually end up naming this video uh, part one and part, you know, the part one will be about the annoying things about this camera. I actually didn't know it would take this long. Um, so just to save you guys time, let's say maybe someone doesn't want to watch all the annoying things about this, then they'll just go straight to part two, which will be a comparison of this and that. And um, okay, so thanks for watching. The other videos will be linked down below. And um, don't forget to subscribe and stuff. Obviously, if you have questions, feel free to ask me below. But, um, you know, if you can, it's probably better that, uh, you know, feel free to ask me questions. But uh, ideally, you'd watch the, you'd, I'd probably go over the question that you have in the coming up videos, uh, which will be down below. So, um, but anyways, feel free to ask. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.